what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Jonas. Um, so we haven't uh, recorded um, as frequently as we usually do over the Christmas period for obviously re- obvious reasons. I've had my, my dad down, there's been a lot of uh, work to do in my personal life, uh, but we're back on with the podcast here. This is episode 13. And we're going to be doing a bit of a double episode, uh, focusing purely on NXT UK this week. We're going to be looking at NXT UK from last week, uh, which was aired on the 26th of December, and from this week, the 2nd of January. So a double episode. Um, I've watched an awful lot of NXT UK over the last few days, um, so a lot of interesting things to get stuck into. So the uh, Wednesday, December the 26th episode of NXT UK starts with a shot of the fans from the Olympia in Liverpool. And we see Sid Scala, who is the assistant to the general manager, not the assistant general manager, don't get confused, um, in the ring as he introduces the NXT UK general manager, Johnny Saint, to the ring. Where Sid and Johnny Saint announces NXT UK takeover Blackpool. Um, so we've known about this for a few weeks now. There was obviously spoilers online when this was first announced from the people that were there. Uh, but this is the show. This is the moment when it was first announced. Uh, we get to see it a few weeks later on the recorded show, of course. Um, so this will take place from the Empress Ballroom in Blackpool, the place where it all started in January 2017 with the inaugural WWE UK Championship Tournament. Tony Storm then joins Scala and Saint in the ring to allow reception. As always, Tony says that she is so proud to be part of the NXT UK brand and how this year has been so good to her. This year, she's been able to go on to uh, uh, take part in WWE Evolution, uh, became the winner of the Mae Young Classic. She thinks that that means that she gets a championship match of her choosing and she wants to challenge for the NXT UK Women's Championship at Blackpool against Rhea Ripley. Johnny Saint says that the championship opportunity is hers and the first match at NXT UK TakeOver is made. Rhea Ripley vs Tony Storm at TakeOver Blackpool for the NXT UK Women's Championship. Then we see Kenny Williams in the first match of the night. He's accompanied to the ring by Amir Jordan vs Jordan Devlin. So I'm a big fan of both of these two wrestlers with Williams being a former three-time ICW Zero-G champion. But tonight he's going up against the Irish ace, Jordan Devlin. The two very similar sized wrestlers lock up for the start of the match. Uh, Kenny Williams gets caught early as he attempts a drop kick through the ropes, only to be dropped back first on the ring apron by Devlin, followed by a backbreaker of sorts in the centre of the ring. Devlin impresses me uh, again with his with an enziguri, but he's caught with a pair of knees uh, from an attempted standing moonsault, allowing Williams to cover Devlin for a two count. A wicked pump handle kick from Devlin from Williams, sorry, takes Devlin to the outside, which he follows up with a dive through the ropes. This time catching its target, William gets a bit of offence in against the Irish Ace, but is caught with a wicked half Nelson suplex. Uh, with Williams landing heavily on his back, on the back of his neck, that did look pretty brutal. Devlin executes his trademark rip cord backdrop driver before finishing Williams off with his finisher, Ireland's Call. That was a fun match that went just over six minutes, with Williams getting in some fast-paced offence before Devlin went back to his bu- brutal range of manoeuvres to eventually put Williams away for the win. Devlin gets on the mic and says that another week, another victory, and another opportunity for you to see another win from the Irish ace. He goes on to say that week after week he comes out here to get his hand raised and an entire country celebrates with him. He's proud to be Irish. He calls out uh, all of the fake pretenders and finishes by saying that you should never bet against the ace. We see a video showing the arrival of Marcel Bartel coming to NXT UK very soon. Maybe he'll be joining up with former Ring Camp stablemate and the much anticipated uh, Walter, who has recently signed a WWE contract and, and is expected to be part of um, the NXT or maybe more likely the NXT UK brand from January onwards. Uh, possibly as soon as NXT UK take over Blackpool, uh, could he be seated at ringside as the new signee uh, or could he get involved in one of the matches, possibly uh, the main event in some way? Re Ripley interrupts Sid Scala and Johnny Saint backstage to say that she is the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion and that next week she will be defending her title and that they had better find her an opponent. Sid and Johnny responds by saying that Ripley will be facing Diona Perrazzo in next week's episode for the championship. 
Dan Maloney and Eddie Dennis is next up. Uh, Dennis is coming off of his first loss ever in NXT UK to the bomber Dave Mastiff. We get a replay of his backstage attack uh, on Mastiff from uh, from last week during the match. Dennis hits Maloney with a super stiff forearm and a side slam on the ring apron, but barely two minutes into the match, Eddie is met on the outside by the bomber um, as the two brawl at ringside. The bomber nails... Uh, a wicked overhead throw on Dennis, but Dennis is able to roll out of the ring to avoid Mastiff's running cannonball in the corner. However, Maloney wasn't so lucky as he suffers the frustration of the big man with Mastiff destroying him uh, with a running cannonball in the corner as Eddie Dennis is announced as the winner by disqualification. We then see a backstage confrontation between Liguero and Joe Coffey in readiness for their match together tonight. Sid Scala tries to calm the situation down by announcing that in a couple of weeks' time, the other two members of Gallus, um, Wolfgang and Mark Coffey, of course, will face Mustache Mountain in the semi-finals of the tournament to crown the first ever NXT UK Tag Team Championship. Uh, Joe Coffey ends the segment by saying that this is his kingdom. Uh, his sights certainly appear to be firmly set on a possible encounter, uh, maybe possible championship match with the reigning UK champion Pete Dunne. Liverpool's number one Zach Gibson is next as he shows the truth of Liverpool in his guide to his beloved city, essentially hyping up himself and Mr Mayhem James Drake as they get set to stake their claim on the NXT UK tag team titles. We will see Drake and Gibson later on in the show. Uh, I, for one, would love to see Drake and Gibson be be become the NXT UK Tag Team Champions. And as far as it looks like, we have three out of the four teams set for the semi-finals of the tournament so far, with Gallus taking on Mustache Mountain and Drake and Gibson in the second semi. But who will be their opponents in this match? We will no doubt find out in the coming week or so. Next up, we have... Uh, Tyson T-Bone and Saxton Huxley teaming up versus uh, Tucker and Mark Stars. So Stars and Tucker made a spirited attempt against a bigger and stronger team of Huxley and T-Bone, but they were no real match um, against the unorthodox team of the Gypsy King and the Maligned Beast as they win the match in just under two minutes. Radzi is then seen backstage with Isla Dawn when they were interrupted by Ginny, who said that Isla Dawn had a chance to win the NXT UK Championship and she lost. Ginny went on to say that if she was in that position, she would have walked out with the NXT UK Championship. And that is the difference between a witch and a queen. Strong words there from Ginny. Obviously setting up a match between the two of them in the coming weeks. Liguero versus Joe Coffey is the next match. Uh, Liguero uh, gets a great reception from the fans in Liverpool in this main event of Hour 1. Joe Coffey makes his intimidating entrance with Gallus stable mates Mark Coffey and Wolfgang, the heel faction of NXT UK. This was a fun match with Coffey using his size and power against Liguero, who demonstrated his pace and high-flying techniques. In one of the moves of the night, uh, with both men on the outside, Coffey launches himself at Liguero with an almighty running diving headbutt, hitting Liguero directly into the torso, sending him crashing into the barriers at ringside. That was an awesome sight. Coffey adds insult to injury by placing Liguero into a full Nelson before transitioning into a guillotine, then a butterfly suplex for a two-count. Liguero is able to make a brief comeback after avoiding another running diving headbutt from Coffey. Uh, Coffey rolls to the outside where he is met with a picture perfect sent on over the top rope from Liguero, and Liguero manages to hit uh, sliced bread on Coffey for a two count. And uh, Joe Coffey looks rocked at this stage. In another highlight of the night, Coffey blocks an attempted top rope Hurricane Rana, turn it into a power bomb and Boston Crab combo, but Liguero is able to reach the bottom rope. The end of the match comes after Liguero, who was still on the offence at this point, tried a second rope slingshot back elbow, only to be caught by a huge forearm in midair. Uh, Joe Coffey calls it the best for the bells for the victory um, in this very entertaining main event to end our one in just under 10 minutes. And remember that this is just a one or four hours of NXT UK that I'll be uh, recapping today, uh, with this being a, a double uh, special episode because of the holiday season. Hour 2 commences with a shot of Rhea Ripley and Deonna Perrazzo as they get ready for their match for the NXT uh, UK Women's Championship tonight. The winner of the match will go on to face Tony Storm at NXT UK TakeOver in Blackpool on the 12th of January. James Drake and Zach Gibson uh, is next up. 
uh, versus Wild Boar Mike Hitchman and the Primate Jake Melrose. Um, this is the first time we've seen the Primate tonight team with the Wild Boar in what should be an entertaining match against one of the favourites for the NXT Tag Team Championship Tournament. A team of James Drake and Liverpool's number one, Zach Gibson. Zach Gibson, of course, was the winner of the second annual WWE UK Championship Tournament, which took place at the Royal Albert Hall in the summer. Although he lost um, in his WWE UK Championship match against the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne on night two. Some great back and forth action in this match with Drake and Gibson putting an end to this match in fairly dominant fashion after just five minutes, uh, despite a very spirited effort from Wild Boar and Primate. There were no match for the well-oiled team of Drake and Gibson after the ticket to ride double lung blower, um, double team move for the win. Gibson gets on the mic after the match to loud boos from the fans in Liverpool. He says that the NXT UK tag team titles are right around the corner and he knows a thing or two about winning tournaments. We conquered all of Europe, referring to Liverpool Football Club, and that they won the bloody lot. He said that he loves the city, but he absolutely hates the people of Liverpool. The second he got any success, the Scouse fans turned their back on Zap Gibson. No one in this room can take that success away from him and he is going to keep representing Liverpool because no one else in this room could uh, ever could. They are the best team in the world and soon to be recognised as NXT UK Tag Team Champions. We then see Tyler Bate and Trent Seven backstage talking about their tag team title tournament match against Gallus in the semi-final of the tournament uh, with the winning team going on to uh, the first ever NXT takeover in Blackpool. Uh, we will see that match later on tonight. Dave Mastiff versus Josh Morrell. Morrell was meant to be the next victim for the bomber, Dave Mastiff, uh, but he didn't even make it as far as the ramp area before being flattened by the pride of Wales, Eddie Dennis, causing yet further friction between Eddie Dennis and Dave Mastiff. We then see Joseph Connors in a backstage segment with Connors saying how NXT UK has its shiny new toys and just two years ago he was one of those shiny new toys, but now he's ba uh, battered, scratched and discarded. And if he can't be one of those shiny new toys, then he is going to make sure that they are battered, scratched and discarded just like him. That was uh, great. Uh, and as I said a few weeks ago, that's exactly what Joseph Connors needed, some, some character development. And that was a great way to show some personality uh, from the uh, Nottingham native. Mark Andrews takes on Marcel Bartel. Uh, now, I was lucky enough to see Marcel Bartel wrestle at WWE Access in New Orleans in April, the morning of WrestleMania, against Austin Theory for the WWN Championship, and he was one of the more entertaining guys on the mic during that session. Tonight, he goes up against Mark Andrews, one of the mainstays uh, of the NXT UK brand, and this should be entertaining. Uh, Bartel made his name in Germany for the WXW brand as the formal Axel Dieter Jr. And as I mentioned earlier, he is also known for being a former stablemate of Walter and Timothy Thatcher uh, in the group known as Ring Camp. Andrew starts the match with pace, but uh, Bartel soon slows the thing down with a series of punches and kicks before planting Andrews with a face-first slam and a wicked running knee to the face of the Welshman for uh, a two-count. Bartel nails Andrews with a running drop kick, and he's putting in a great showing in this match so far. Bartel applies yet another submission hold, this time a chin lock, grounding the high-flying Andrews in the process. The match goes to the outside with Andrews hitting a somersault sent on from the ring steps and with Andrews gaining some momentum, Fabian Eichner then walks down towards the ring to distract the high-flying Welshman. These two have been going backwards and forwards in a bit of a feud over the last few weeks. Uh, they had an outstanding match in Fabian's NXT UK W three weeks ago, but Eichner is out here to stir things up again. This allows Bartel to get a couple of close near falls uh, back once on the inside, um, but Andrews turns the tide with a stun dog millionaire. Uh, his, his offense is cut short, uh, however, when the referee, with the referee being distracted by Bartel on the inside of the ring, uh, while Andrews is attacked by Eichner back on the outside before Andrews was uh, flung back into the ring, allowing Bartel to hit his finisher for the win. That was a fun little match, and you may remember that Eichner said that he was going out to find a tag team partner of his own uh, to win the NXT UK tag team titles. Well, it looks as though Marcel Bartel is that tag team partner, and possibly the start of a faction between uh, these two, possibly being called uh, the European Union. Could this union also involve Walter when he arrives in 2019?
Next we see a video package showing Tony Storm and her desire to be the next NXT UK Women's Champion as she'll be facing the champion at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool on the 12th of January. We'll be covering NXT UK to, uh, TakeOver Blackpool in detail. We'll have a full review um, out the following day on the 13th of January. Uh, this is a show I'm definitely looking forward to. Then we get the match uh, between Rhea Ripley and the Virtuoso Diona Perazzo. So Rhea Ripley, the NXT UK Women's Champion, of course. Diona Perazzo enters uh, first in her NXT UK debut. Um, what a debut this could be as she goes up against the current NXT UK Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley, with the championship on the line. Now, the irony of this match is that uh, you have an Australian as a champion and her opponent tonight is American. Tony Storm is the number one contender. She is also from Australia. Uh, you also have uh, non-UK stars in the women's division, such as Killer Kelly from Portugal, Dakota Kai from New Zealand. None of this I have a problem with. However, I would like to see a UK champion um, of the women's division at some point in NXT UK. Um, at some point in the future, maybe a Ginny or a Millie McKenzie. I'm sure we'll get to see these compete for the championship in the not-too-distant future. However, tonight we have Ripley versus Perazzo, and it's Ripley who gets the upper hand as she drops Perazzo face-first on the ring apron on the outside before throwing her opponent into the barriers at ringside. Ripley shows off her aggression once back inside the ring with a brutal, brutal back blows and stomps before covering her opponent for a two count. Ripley executes... Um, a perfect vertical delayed suplex for another two count before applying a body, body scissors to keep control of the match. Uh, Ripley applies her impressive standing reverse cloverleaf on Prazo, but she is able to break the hold by reaching the bottom rope. The match goes to the outside where Ripley tries to suplex Prazo on the ring apron. However, Prazo blocks the move before striking with a running soccer kick uh, to the chest of the champ. Prazo nails uh, a beautiful sent on, a rolling sent on on Ripley on the outside, sending the champ to the floor as the challenger starts to turn the tide. Prazo hits a flatliner before slapping on a Koji clutch in the centre of the ring, uh, but the more powerful Ripley is able to roll Prazo over for a pinning attempt and a close near fall. Prazo is putting uh, on an impressive show in here against Ripley. Both wrestlers end up on the second rope uh, and, and top turnbuckle with Ripley attempting a superplex on her opponent, which gets blocked twice before Prazo rolls um, over, attempting a sunset powerbomb uh, on Ripley. But Ripley is just too strong and holds onto the top turnbuckle to avoid the move. However, Perazzo is determined, and with Ripley still standing on the second turnbuckle, she's able to hit a German suplex and Ripley crash into the mat from the second turnbuckle. That was an impressive move, but Perazzo is still unable to capitalise. Perazzo hits a great looking face buster for a two count, and despite everything she's throwing at the young NXT UK champion, she cannot put her opponent away. The match ends when Ripley, um, with Ripley pulling Perazzo face first into the middle turnbuckle, stunning her opponent before pulling Perazzo into her riptide pump handle slam for the hard fought victory in the centre of the ring. After the match, Ripley starts to lay in a beating on Perazzo until Tony Storm comes out to make the save, sending Ripley scurry into the ramp. Deanna Perazzo and Tony Storm shake hands in the centre of the ring uh, to end hour two of the December the 26th episode. Today's show is brought to you by Finishing Moves Limited, specialising in the simple, stylish and versatile to help you elevate your everyday. Check out their Instagram at Finishing Move Limited and find their elevated essentials range at finishingmovelimited.com. The January the 2nd, 2019 episode starts with a graphic show in Moustache Mountain and their opponents later on tonight, Gallus, uh, Mark Coffey and Wolfgang in the first semi-final of the tournament to see who will be crowned the first ever NXT UK Tag Team Champions. Travis Banks versus Jamie Ahmed is up next. Now, I want to uh, correct something I said during the Fight Forever episode of Wrestling with Jonas when I said that I hadn't seen Travis Banks wrestle live before that night. Well, what I should have meant, uh, remembered is that I did actually see Travis Banks wrestle at uh, WWE Access in New Orleans on WrestleMania Sunday morning. As he defended his Progress Wrestling Championship, uh, I believe it was against No Way Jose. So a bit of a throw together match here. It's fairly entertaining from what I can remember. Um, but uh, yes, that, that was the first time that I saw Travis Banks wrestle live in person. Tonight, however, he's going up against Jamie Ahmed. Uh, Banks' experience proved too much for the lesser known Ahmed as Banks put him away with his slingshot enziguri for the relatively easy win. 
After the match, Jordan Devlin came to the stage area to address Travis and to send out a clear message to the Kiwi Buzzsaw how that would be uh, that would be an amazing match to, that I would definitely like to see. Possibly at the NXT TakeOver Blackpool. Uh, will it happen, though? We will have to see. With NC video package highlighting the feud between Mustache Mountain and Gallus, uh, which has been uh, brewing now for a number of weeks. All of this leading to their semi-final match in the tournament to crown the first ever NXT UK Tag Team Champion at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. We see some highlights from last week's show and the various confrontations between Dave Mastiff and Eddie Dennis. Uh, and before we finish tonight, we will see the much-anticipated rematch uh, between the Pride of Wales and the Bomber. Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan is up next against Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner. So we just reviewed Marcel Bartel's NXT UK TV debut earlier on in this episode. And thanks to some outside interference from Fabian Eichner, Bartel managed to pull off a victory against Mark Andrews in a fairly good encounter there. Uh, following that match, Bartel and Eichner appeared to have made a union of sorts, uh, leading to them tagging together tonight, hoping to be included into the tournament to crown the first ever NXT UK Tag Team Champions. Marcel and Eichner dominated this match in the early stages with their strength and technique. Um, I have been impressed with Eichner over recent weeks, especially in his series of matches with Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster. This is the second match that we've seen from the former Axel Dieter Jr., now Bar Marcel Bartel, so far, and uh, he and Eichner appear to be combining very well. As mentioned in previous episodes, Fabian Eichner is the current Evolve Heavyweight Champion after he beat Shane Strickland in a, a couple of months ago at an Evolve show. He has since defended his title against a, a, a range of stars, including Cassius Ono. However, in this match, as soon as uh, Kenny Williams gets tagged in, he sets the place on fire with big elbows, drop kicks and dives, turning the momentum on the heel opponents. However, the combo of Eichner and Marcel Bartel soon put an end to the match after Amir Jordan tags himself in, uh, only to be squashed by Bartel and Eichner with an impressive double team manoeuvre to put Jordan away in impressive fashion. A uh, bit of tension building there uh, between Williams and Jordan possibly leading to a little bit of a feud between those two. We see Tony Storm and Deanna Perazzo talking backstage with Storm offering Perazzo a match, which we will see later on tonight. Johnny Saint and Sid Scala are now backstage in a backstage interview talking about NXT UK TakeOver until Joe Coffey interrupts saying that how he deserves an opportunity and that this is all about him. My opportunity and my kingdom, he said. Uh, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, it's going to be me, Joe Coffey versus the WWE UK Champion Pete Dunne. So it appears that Joe Coffey has put himself into title contention there against the Bruiserweight. Could we be seeing the groundworks towards our main event in Blackpool? Then we see Ginny versus Candy Floss. Uh, in a previous episode, we reviewed Rhea Ripley's first ever NXT UK women's title defence uh, against her hand-picked opponent at the time in the very inexperienced Candy Floss. Um, here we see Candy Floss up against Ginny and Ginny is not in a hugging mood as she makes very easy work of Candy Floss with a Japanese arm dragged followed by her uh, touch of couture ripcord liger kick finisher for the pinfall. Next up, Mustache Mountain versus Gallus, uh, the combination of Mark Coffey and Wolfgang for the semi-finals of the NXT UK Tag Team Title Tournament. The duo of Tyler Bate and Trent Seven make their way to the ring to a thunderous ovation from the fans in attendance, along with uh, uh, Pete Dunne, Tony Storm, uh, Bates and Seven are the most over superstars on the NXT UK brand right now. A loud chance for big strong boys as their opponents make their way to the ring, led, by, uh, led alongside Joe Coffey. Gallus have been the dominant heel faction in NXT UK and have been persistent in their attacks, both verbal and physical, towards British strong style over recent months. Mustache Mountain had three out of the four best matches in 2018 in their series against Undisputed Era in the summer. They managed to win the NXT Tag Team titles versus Undisputed Era at Royal Albert Hall in June, only to lose the titles to Strong and O'Reilly in a rematch at Full Sail only a week later. In a bona fide five-star match, uh, their final encounter was at NXT TakeOver Chicago when the Undisputed Era retained their championships in another five-star match. Gallus dominate the first part of this match as Coffey and Wolfgang take turns to pummel the current Progress Atlas Division champion Trent Seven. Wolfgang nails Seven with a running senton and a bear hug putting pressure on Seven's midsection. 
Mark Coffey is tagged in and uh, hits a beautiful forearm sending Trent Seven crashing to the outside. The fans are really getting into this match as they're willing Trent Seven to tag out. Uh, Seven is able to reverse a suplex attempt into one of his own, giving him enough space and time, allowing him to tag out to Tyler Bate for the hot tag. Uh, Bate hits several dives and exploded suplex. Uh, a stand-in shooting star press on Wolfgang finally uh, send in Coffee to the outside with the drop kick. Tyler even lifts the much lar larger Wolfgang onto his shoulders for an impressive airplane spin. In one of the moves of the night so far, the smaller Bates manages to lift Wolfgang into a de delayed German suplex while Mark Coffey was also on his back, dumping both of the much larger opponents onto the canvas to a massive pop. Kofi uh, gets a, a close near fall with a forearm um, off of Bates' slingshot clothesline attempt, but only for a two count. Just then, Mark Coffey signals for Joe Coffey to come to the ringside area for backup. This causes the WWUK champion Pete Dunne to come to uh, the ringside himself to even up the numbers to a massive ovation from the fans. Match ends when Tyler Bate and Trent Seven execute their slingshot clothesline half and half suplex combo uh, on Mark Coffey for the 1 2 3 and the victory for Mustache Mountain uh, and the team progressing to the final of the tag team title tournament in Blackpool. Gallus starts a bit of an onslaught on all three members of British Strong Style until Bate, Seven and Dunn bundle all three members of Gallus over the top rope and to the outside. Pete Dunn then gets on the mic um, and he has been speaking to the NXT UK general manager Johnny Saint in the back and he's decided on his opponent at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool and he has decided on Joe Coffey. This hour of NXT UK goes off the air with, a, with all six men brawling in the ring involving British Strong Style and Gallus. That was a fun hour of NXT UK TV and an outstanding match to see who goes through to the final for the NXT Tag Team titles at TakeOver Blackpool. We then move into the final hour of January the 2nd's episode of NXT UK with a rematch between Eddie Dennis and Dave Mastiff being our main event later on in the show. Tony Storm and Diana Prazo kicks things off. Uh, Tony Storm comes out to a raucous ovation, soon to be followed by the virtuoso Diana Prazo. Now, both of these ladies were in the Mae Young Classic earlier on in the year, with Storm coming out as a winner after beating Io Shirai in the final. Prazo made it all the way to the quarterfinals. Along with Rhea Ripley and uh, Becky Lynch, Tony Storm has had a groundbreaking year, and remember that she's still uh, only 22 or 23 years of age. Uh, plenty of holes and chain wrestling from both competitors to start the match until Prazo shows her heel tendencies by kicking away Storm's offer of a hang handshake. Storm ups the pace with a drop kick and a snap suplex before applying an STF. Storm misses a hip attack in the corner, allowing Prazo to attack Storm's left arm, possibly setting her opponent up for her Fujiwara armband, uh, armbar a little later on. Storm is able to gain a comeback with a backstabber and a hip attack, uh, but was unable to execute her Storm Zero due to her arm injury. Perazzo applies uh, a rings of satin, uh, keeping her the hold locked in on Storm for a good minute until Tony Storm is finally able to touch the bottom rope for the break. Both wrestlers start to throw strikes in the centre of the ring until Storm hits a snap German suplex and eventually a Storm Zero Tiger Driver uh, for the victory. Jess and Rhea Ripley comes out to the ring to stare down Tony Storm as their takeover match is now set for Blackpool in just 10 days' time. We see Sid Scala and Johnny Saint who announces that the next semi-final for the NXT UK Tag Team titles will take place next week um, and it will be between Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews versus the combo of James Drake and Liverpool's number one Zach Gibson. We see Wild Boar Mike Hitchman versus Josh, M Josh Morrell. So Wild Boar looks insane as he hangs onto the ropes with a wild look in his eyes before the start of the match. This was um, a match to get the character of the Wild Boar over uh, with a win. All of his previous matches on NXT UK have been on the losing end. However, Mike Hitchman is a very unique character and has a unique wrestling style, practically using his body as a weapon to cause damage on his opponents. Uh, Morale does have his moments here against Wild Boar, but Hitchman picked up the win after hitting his inverted cannibal sent on before finishing the match with a wild frog splash from the top rope for the win. We then get another backstage promo from Joseph Connors in a dark part of the arena saying how he was sold a lie when he started with the NXT UK brand um, 
with everyone being told that they were that they were NXT UK. Joseph Connors is all about himself, and if Joseph Connors has to break every single one of the shiny new toys, then so be it. Another bit of character development there from Connors. I think the WWE must have been listening to me a few weeks ago when I mentioned that Joseph Connors was a bit dull. Uh, these vignettes are definitely doing the trick uh, to bring out some uh, some character from Joseph Connors there. Travis Banks has a backstage interview sending out a message to Jordan Devlin in a battle between uh, who appears to love their country more. Expect to see a hard-hitting match between these two um, awesome talents in the coming weeks, although I'd love to see them go at it uh, at Blackpool. Uh, take over Blackpool, as I mentioned earlier, but I think it could possibly be a feud for TV only at this stage. We'll have to see what develops. Then we see Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner getting into a heated argument with the assistant to the GM, Sid Scala, over why they weren't given the semi-final spot in the tag team title tournament instead of Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews. Scala said, that's enough. Uh, Bartel said that he knows it, and Scala knows it. They deserve to be in the second semi-final. Bartel tells Scala to put them in the match. Scala says that they have only just arrived in NXT UK and the opportunity right now goes to Webster and Andrews and if they think about getting involved in the semi-final match then they will be out of NXT UK as fast as they arrived. Nice to see Scala standing his ground there. The second semi-final match um, is set so Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews will be teaming up to take on James Drake and Zach Gibson with the winner going on to take over Blackpool to face Moustache Mountain. Then we see the, the rematch between the bomber Dave Mastiff and Eddie Dennis. So this rematch from a few weeks ago where Mastiff beat Dennis in a good but quick match. Dennis uh, then went on to attack Mastiff backstage as well as having other confrontations at ringside all leading up to this much anticipated rematch tonight between these two huge stars on the NXT brand. Dennis uh, starts the match with a fast attack in the corner, pummeling Mastiff with punches, kicks and various Irish whips. Both men match each other move for move until Mastiff hits a running crossbody and a stunning drop kick uh, for the big man. Dennis gets bundled to the outside where he catches Mastiff uh, on the ring apron before hoisting him up for his crucifix razor's edge type move, which Mastiff is able to wriggle out of to execute a Finley roll with Dennis on his back. The bomber misses um, Dennis, as he launches himself into the steel ring steps, uh, back and forth, forearm smashes, punches, headbutts from both men in the centre of the ring. Uh, the referee tries to break up the brawl, uh, but neither man is listening until the referee gets caught up in the brawl and gets knocked against the ropes. The referee calls for the bell, but the two wrestlers continue to brawl even after the match is ruled a double DQ. Jessen, Johnny Saint comes to the ringside to call for a stop to their brawling and announces that Eddie Dennis and Dave Mastiff will be booked for a match at a TakeOver Blackpool in a non-disqualification match. That should be a hard-hitting match, but somewhat repetitive with that being their third match on NXT UK TV, um, as well as the various brawls we've had between their matches over recent weeks. I can see why Sid Scala has been put out there to be the assistant to Johnny Saint, though, as Johnny uh, tripped over uh, the very few words that he had to say. Uh, but never mind, we all love Johnny Saint. Uh, but a smart move from uh, Triple H by adding Scala to the management team there. Then we get a graphic showing a six-man tag on next week's episode of NXT UK uh, between all three members of Gallus versus British Strong Style, comprising of Trent Seven, Tyler Bates and the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. Sid Scala and Johnny Saint are in the ring for the contract signing of Joe Coffey and Pete Dunne for their WWE UK Championship match at TakeOver Blackpool on the 12th of January. Huge bruiserweight chance as Dunne and Coffey stare each other down. Coffey grabs a mic and says that there will be a change of the guard at NXT UK TakeOver. Coffey tells Scala and Saint to back up as he wants one moment with Pete Dunne. Coffey says that this is his ring, this country, this kingdom... This brand is all now his, and soon that WWE UK title is going to be his too. Coffee asks, how long um, has he been champion? Too long, probably, says Coffee. Coffee asks why Pete Dunne is still the champion, and that is because Joe Coffee has not been here that long. It's now time for the Iron King to stand and claim his throne. Coffee signs the contract, but just then Dunne grabs Coffee's hand and snaps his fingers before signing the contract himself. Dunn grabs the microphone to say that Coffee talks too much and that he will see him at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Um, there you have it, the main event for the WWE UK Championship has been set. 
Coffey then attacks Dunn as the rest of Gallus come out to the ring, while Joe Coffey power bombs Pete Dunn through the table uh, set up in the centre of the ring. Coffey then picks up the WWUK title and holds it high above his head to close out the show. So NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool is really shaping up now with four matches confirmed. Um, we've just seen um, the contract sign-in between Pete Dunne and Joe Coffey. That will be for the WWUK Championship. Rhea Ripley will be going up against Tony Storm uh, for the NXT UK Women's Championship. Mustache Mountain will be in the final um, to face the winners between Drake and Gibson versus Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews in the final of the Tag Team Title Tournament. And uh, as it was announced just a moment ago, Eddie Dennis will take on Dave Mastiff in a no DQ match. There's expected to be at least one more match. Uh, could that possibly be Travis Banks versus Jordan Devlin? I think that'll be a good match to round off the card. And it could be a very, very solid show. So January is going to be a very busy month for wrestling fans. And I'll be covering a lot of it right here on Wrestling With Jonas. Over the next uh, day or so, I'll be recording a double episode of NXT from the 26th of December and the 2nd of January. Going forward, I'll be recording NXT and NXT UK separately each week. And of course, next week's episode of NXT UK will be the go-home show before the first ever NXT UK takeover in Blackpool. It doesn't quite have the sound, so the same ring as TakeOver Brooklyn or TakeOver War Games, uh, but it is where NXT UK all started almost two years ago to the day when we saw Tyler Bate win the WWE UK Championship against Pete Dunne in that inaugural tournament to crown the first ever UK champion. Uh, I will be covering NXT TakeOver Blackpool in detail, uh, which will drop on the 13th of January. I will also continue to cover NXT from Full Sail each week in the lead up to NXT TakeOver Phoenix, uh, which will be covered one day later on Wrestling With Jonas. That will take place just one day before the Royal Rumble, which I will also be reviewing here on Wrestling With Jonas. Uh, I'll, be co I'll be covering a lot of progress wrestling in January, including a full recap of episodes 80, 81 and 82. Uh, 82 is going to include a special guest to help me review that. And that will all happen over the next few weeks. And on the subject of progress, um, they had their most recent show take place this past weekend where Pete Dunne announced his retirement from wrestling on the British independent circuit. Uh, what does that mean for Pete Dunne? Uh, my guess is that he will be assigned to wrestle for WWE and NXT on a full-time basis. So you'll only see him on WWE TV and pay-per-views in the future. Not only will we see him at TakeOver Blackpool, but I would expect to see him as an entrant in this year's Royal Rumble, with Pete being uh, exclusive to the WWE now. I would also expect to have the WWE Championship um, in greater prominence on the main roster cards, especially with Dunn's UK title reign entering a third calendar year now. I think it's over 600 days uh, as champion. Pete Dunne uh, has been the most dominant champion on its entire roster in the last couple of years and Pete Dunne could very easily be a bigger part of WWE in the future. If we see Dunne at the Rumble, it wouldn't surprise me if he has a championship match um, at WrestleMania in April, albeit on the pre-show defending his UK championship. Um, I will not be covering uh, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom because I'll be handing over that responsibility to Heather, who helped me cover Fight Forever, the Fight Forever show from Bristol. Um, in episode eight, she'll be accompanied by one of the brightest um, up and coming rappers in the UK right now, Half Decent, otherwise known as my friend Chris. Heather and Chris will be covering Wrestle Kingdom for me, which should be up within the next few days of the show airing. Wrestle Kingdom is usually one of the highlights of the wrestling calendar um, and only four days into the new year. So that's pretty much it from uh, Wrestling With Jonas for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the double episode of NXT UK. Um, a lot of wrestling watched by myself there. Got a couple of hours of uh, NXT to catch up on now from Full Sail, but that will be going up in the next couple of days. As mentioned, we'll also be getting a special episode of uh, Wrestle Kingdom being covered on Wrestling With Jonas and a few episodes of uh, progress to cover all in the next few weeks. We've also got uh, NXT TakeOver Blackpool to cover from the 12th of January, and then that all leads up to NXT TakeOver Phoenix and the Royal Rumble towards the end of the month. So plenty of wrestling uh, to watch as wrestling fans and plenty to be covered here on Wrestling With Jonas. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with the show. Just simply email wrestlingwithjohners at gmail.com. Uh, give us your feedback um, about the show. We'd love for you to get in touch. You can also get in touch um, or uh, visit the show page on Twitter at withjohnners underscore WWJ. 
you can visit my uh, YouTube page. Simply search Jonas Wrestling. You can now follow the show on Instagram. Uh, just go to Instagram.com forward slash Wrestling with Jonas. That's Instagram.com forward slash Wrestling with Jonas. So I'll be back in uh, the next couple of days with a special double episode of NXT, um, focusing on the 26th of December and 2nd of January uh, episodes from Full Sail. Uh, we've obviously got uh, the special episode that we mentioned earlier of New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom, which is taking place on a Friday morning UK time, and we'll get that up uh, on the podcast as soon as we can. And so much more great wrestling from NXT, NXT UK to look forward to in the coming weeks. So uh, that's pretty much it from this episode. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to uh, spread the word to your friends and family if you like wrestling with Jonas. Don't forget to visit our uh, social media pages. And uh, that's all. Uh, catch up with you all soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.